Today's Word Podcast with Rick Pena. Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pena, and I bring you today's word for February 21st, 2018. I'm teaching a series entitled The Benefits of Prayer and Fasting. I taught on, on fasting first. I'm teaching on prayer now, and I'm going to close out the series this week. And so I'm excited about the message this morning. I need to jump straight into it. This is The Power of Prayer, Part 22. The Power of Prayer, Part 22. Yesterday, I taught you about fear and how fear would negatively impact your prayer life. Well, today I'm going to flow in that same vein. Actually, last night I taught in my church about fear. And, uh, and one of the scriptures that I used was Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. I want to read that passage to you this morning and get into it. You ready? Here we go. Let's go. So Hebrews 2, 14, 15 says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he, talking about Jesus, also himself likewise partook of the same, that through death, he, Jesus, might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil. So through death, Jesus destroyed the devil. And watch this, deliver them who through fear or the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. There's some people who because of the fear of death have spent all their life in subject to bondage. So that's what we'll deal with on today. I consider the fear of death to be the mother of all fears. All other fears kind of stem from this fear of of death. The fear of death literally incapacitates a great number of people every day. I'm not, you know, I uh, didn't deal with it on today's word, but I dealt with it last night, like David and Goliath. Goliath spoke words and, and fear got into King Saul and all his people to where a whole army, like an army of trained men, were incapacitated for 40 days. They couldn't do anything because they were afraid of this man. And a 17-year-old boy said, man, psh, forget that. This man has defiled the armies of the living God, this uncircumcised Philistine. I killed the lion. I killed a bear. I'm going to kill this man right here. And he killed him with a slingshot and a stone. But you had a whole army of people incapacitated because of fear. There are many believers that are incapacitated in, a men, in, in many ways. Uh, uh, God has told you to start a business, but you're afraid, so you don't want to start it. God has told you to launch out, uh, you know, to start this opportunity, start that opportunity, to become. These are things you have to do to become the man, the woman that God has called you to be, but you're not doing it because you're afraid and fear has incapacitated you. The sad reality is that many People, even born again believers, live with an overwhelming fear. And this fear, all these fears stem from the fear of death. Now, if you allow the fear of death or any other fear to, to abide in your heart, then don't think for a minute that it's not going to impact negatively your prayer life. It will hinder your prayer life. So let's talk more about this fear. So there are people, believers, who are afraid of getting on a plane. <laughs> getting on a cruise ship, getting on a helicopter. My, my wife just got on a helicopter not too long ago in Vegas, and she flew over uh, uh, to the Hoover Dam, and they went over to the Grand Canyon. And there are people that she knows, like, oh, girl, I would have never done that. You know why? Because they're afraid. What are they afraid of? They're not afraid of flying. They're afraid of dying. It's the fear of death. And so remember, we dealt with this yesterday, 1 John 4 and 18. The Bible says that fear has torment. If you allow fear to run rampant in your heart, then it's going to literally torment you. It will torment you. Many people, even believers, are terrified of these things, and they're being tormented by things that really God wants you to conquer over, that Jesus already died for you to be free from, but they're allowing it because they have allowed the fear of death into their hearts. The Father wants us to have and enjoy life in him to the fullest, but you can't. If you are allowing fear to keep you bound, there is bondage, the text says, associated with the fear of death. So let's go back to this text. The writer of Hebrews is explaining who Jesus was and what he came to do. And one of the things Jesus came to do was to destroy the one who had, past tense, had, past tense, had the power of death. That is the devil. So he came to destroy the devil. Past tense, he had the power of death. He doesn't have it anymore. And then we also learn in the text that Jesus conquered death so that we could be delivered from it, so that we could be delivered from the bondage of it. Now, why is this so important? Let's go back to the text. It says many have spent their lifetimes, their whole life under the bondage of the fear of death. The word bondage here means slavery, involuntary servitude, the state of being bound, 
or subject to some external power. There are people that are, that are subject to this power of Satan where Jesus already delivered you from it. Why would you live subject to something that Jesus already freed you from? See, the fear of death causes believers, even believers, to be slaves and living under bondage of something that Jesus already delivered us from. If you're subject to fear, then you not only are you going to live in bondage, but it's going to cripple your faith because it's going to it's going to stifle you, especially your faith while you're waiting on the manifestation of your prayer. So let me say it this way. Oftentimes, most of the time, 99 percent of the time, there's a space between your prayer and the performance of it. Right. So very, you know, very rarely do you pray for something and you get it immediately. Most of the time you pray for something and there's a space between the prayer and the performance. There's a space between your confession and the completion. And in that space, if you allow the fear of death to get in your heart, then you're going to give up before the manifestation of your prayers. While you're waiting on God, you got to wait in faith. And you're not going to wait in faith if you allow fear to get into your heart. Your prayers will not be answered because you'll give up before it's time. And this is absolutely critical. You cannot allow fear into your heart if you're going to believe God because you have to believe God and then remain in faith until you see in your hands what you've already received in your heart. So in an attempt to get a better understanding of these two verses from Hebrews chapter 2, I'm going to read, the transla uh, read these verses to you from two other translations. The contemporary English version, CEV, says, We are people of flesh and blood. That's why Jesus became one of us. He died to destroy the devil who had, once again, past tense, the power of death. But he also died to rescue all of us who live each day in the fear of dying. So he died to deliver us from, from Satan, to destroy Satan. And he also died to deliver us from people who are living each day with the fear of dying. The Message Bible says, since the children are made of flesh and blood, then it's logical that our Savior took on flesh and blood in order to rescue them by his death. By embracing death, Jesus took it upon himself. He destroyed the devil's hold on death. Watch this. And he freed all who cower through life, scared to death of death. There are people, even believers, who are cowering through life, scared to death of death. You're living your life as a coward, even though you're a born-again, blood-bought believer, filled with the Holy Ghost, called according to God's plans and purposes for your life, but you're living your life as a coward because you are cowering to the fear of death. The Bible says, scared to death of death. You can't live that way and have any faith. Remember, we learned yesterday that if you're in fear, you're not in faith. And your prayers will not be answered. You will not become the man, the woman God called you to be. You will not maximize your purpose and potential while you're in the land of the living. If you allow fear, especially the fear of death, to get a hold of your heart, you're going to live in bondage. So what do we learn from this? We learned that, number one, the devil had, past tense, the power over death. He had it. But he doesn't have it anymore. Number two, we learned that Jesus came to take that power back from the devil. And he did. He already did it. Number three, Jesus conquered death so that we could do the same. And number four, the fear of death entangles us in bondage and Jesus died so we could be free from it. You want everything Jesus died for you to have. If Jesus died so you could be free from it, then you should live free from it. I want what Jesus died to give me. Say amen to that. So what does this mean to you today? As I close out, I have three final things to share with you this morning. Let's get into them. You ready? Open up your heart to receive. Number one, Jesus died to give you eternal life. Now, most people are not going to argue this. This is true. But he also died and rose from the dead so that you can have abundant life now while you're in the earth. That's John 10 and 10. So while it is true that Jesus died to give you and rose from the dead to give you eternal life. Yes. And people say, OK, yeah, one day I'm going to go to heaven. But he also died so you can have abundant life now. Now, you don't have to wait till you get to heaven to enjoy what Jesus died to give you. You're supposed to live the abundant life now. You're supposed to enjoy the abundant life now. But in order to do so, you must release fear because fear brings torment. Fear leads to bondage. Fear will keep you bound. And so you can't enjoy the life Jesus died to give you. Fear inhibits you from having this abundant life. And what's crazy about it 
is that Jesus already delivered you from fear. So if you're living in fear, it's because you're allowing it. And God will allow whatever you allow. God will permit whatever you permit. So if you allow it, then you're allowing something that he already delivered you from. Why would you embrace something or allow something or just permit something to operate in your life that you're already delivered from? Release it and release it now. Number two, Jesus died and rose from the dead to take the power of death back from Satan. And he did. He did this to deliver you and me from fear, from the fear of death. He did it once and for all. If Jesus died so that you could have something, then shouldn't you want it? I mean, look at me for a minute. I'm t the text says, the Bible says that Jesus died to deliver you from the fear of death, from all fears. If you are struggling with fear, then shouldn't you want everything that Jesus died to give you? So some, some are saying right now, okay, well, Rick, yeah, yeah, I want it, but how do I receive it? The answer is simple. You receive it by faith. By faith, you must receive freedom from the fear of death because it's already yours. Jesus already died to give it to you. It's already yours. He already took the, the power of death back from Satan. It's already yours. You just have to receive it by faith. Do not allow the fear of death to keep you in bondage another moment. Number three and finally, people who are afraid of flying or anything else like it, I've already dealt with it, and are not afraid of flying. They're afraid of dying. Don't let this be you. Fear will cause you to live in bondage. It will rob you of any true power in Christ Jesus. And it will destroy the confidence that you have when you pray. Your prayers are not going to come to pass because you're not living with faith, with confidence in God. You have confidence that bad things are going to happen. That's called fear. But Jesus died so you could be free from it. So you should be free from it now. So let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to repeat after me in faith from a believing heart. Say this. Say, Father, this is a season of expectation for me. Your word is clear that the fear of death leads to bondage. Now, once I'm able to see, hear, and understand a word from you, then I can be converted by that word. This morning, I saw in your word that Jesus died to deliver me from the bondage of the fear of death. So by faith, I declare that I am converted. By the word I just received, I shall never again allow the fear of death or any other fear to rob me of your best and to strip my prayers of any power. Jesus came to take the sting out of death and victory from the grave. Now, I receive what Jesus did. I receive it now. I no longer fear death. Fear has no power over me. I already died in Christ Jesus, and that's the only death that matters. I will live forever. I have eternal life. And from this day forward, I declare that there's no fear in me. I declare this by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. This is today's word. Apply it and Prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org. There's a subscribe button. Subscribe. Get the messages. They're going to be a blessing to you. As you head into this day, live free from the fear of death. Live free from the mother of all fears. Jesus died so that you could be free. Now walk in the freedom that Christ Jesus died to give you. God bless you.